Grain Peninsula Beach Care runs monthly beach cleans. Over the past year we've picked up about 800 sacks of plastic just from our little tiny slice of the Cornish coastline. We started working with Matthew Witt from the University of Exeter. We've been doing projects looking at certain items and trying to work out how much there is in small areas. So we thought what would be interesting today is to come down to this very, very small cove and just see if we could pick up every single piece of plastic from here. We don't really have any idea how much there is or how long it's been here. We've been looking at plastics in the cove and where, where the plastic lay. So is it at the back of the beach and big bits? Is it at the front of the beach near the sea? We've also done bits of work looking at is plastic near the top of the sand, like on the top, or how far down does the plastics penetrate? Um, and today is the, is the big pick. So we've learnt lots about where it is, but now we want to really know just how much there is. As a scientist, I'm really interested in this, partly because of the plastics, but also working on something that's so visible is really important for improving people's awareness about their, kind of about their conduct and what you do in your homes and your gardens and all of those things, your general day lives, how that can actually affect beaches and the sea. And we value all of these places, but yet you can see all of this plastic is everywhere and ultimately it comes from us. So the work is about generating some interesting numbers about the plastics to kind of show people the impacts that they have. Nurgles are the tiny little pellets of plastic and this is pre-production plastic. It's how plastic starts its life. It's shipped around the world in shipping containers and if one of these containers falls off the side of a boat, as they often do, and splits open, that will release billions of these things into the sea. It's almost impossible to pick them up. We've been trying to pick them up today using tanks of water and spades. We've been spading them in and sieving them off the top. And we have picked up a lot, but really to clear them from the beach is almost impossible. Unfortunately, they're very dangerous because they float, they look like fish eggs. A lot of creatures, that is the base of their diet, and so they're eating nurdles instead. And they also act like sponges in the water. They attract a lot of toxins. So it's not just the fact that animals are becoming bunged up with the plastic. The toxins that are attached to their surface leach into their body tissues as well. We've been here for a few hours. We've made a really big difference, but we haven't actually picked up everything. And because a lot of the pieces are so tiny, it's going to be impossible. We'll be coming back down as often as we can to photograph it and document it and try and see how long it takes for the cove to fill up again. You know, is it going to be the next high tide that brings in a whole new huge amount of plastic or will it take weeks or months or years? We've been given the use of a local venue for a couple of weeks to take this all out of the bag, sort it, categorise it and count it. I don't really know what we're going to find but I suspect we're going to have tens of thousands if not more individual pieces and I think when people realise how many individual pieces are out here in a really small area and the fact that each one of these pieces is capable of killing sea creatures, it's going to make people look in a bit of a different way. We try to use as much of it as we can because otherwise it just has to go to landfill unfortunately. This isn't the kind of stuff that can be recycled. And we have a lot of very talented local artists who use as much of what we pick up as they can to create sculptures and artwork that will help to reach a wider audience and hopefully help to explain to people more about why it's so important that we tackle the issue of plastic in the sea.